Friends, on 1st April 2024, the new financial year, we got greeted with new KYC norms which became activated. And many people are currently trying to understand that why did the KYC went on hold and why their financial assets are currently frozen. There are many new statuses which came up, which people are still wondering what are the implications of it. So in this video, we are going to cover in depth many situations. So please stay right till the end. The areas which we will try to cover are, is your KYC put on hold? How do we resolve it. If you are an NRI and you are unable to get your contacts validated because of which your KYC is getting impacted, how do we resolve that? Your PAN is inoperative as a result, impact on KYC. How do you check your KYCs? What is a KYC? What documents are required to perform this? how to activate your PAN, what are the documents, I mean different types of documents, the OVD concept, FAQs related to NRIs, electronic means to resolve these situations. We'll cover a lot of things in this video, so please do stick right till the end. I'll also encourage if you've got any questions, do write in the notes below. In the comment section, I will try to respond to each and every questions to the best of my ability. Before that, a quick introduction. My name is C.A. Puneet Agarwal. I'm the founder of Banyan FA LLP, where we are one-stop shop for all finance needs of people. Please follow us on Instagram and YouTube, where we release weekly videos related to personal finance. So KYC, the date was 1st April 2024. So you need to appreciate it is still very evolving. And this video is just five days just after when this was released, the new norms. So we are constantly updating our understanding. So based upon my best ability so far, I'm trying to help you guys with what is the analysis which I have. So we'll keep on updating as we understand. Also, this can be a little bit complicated. The video may be a little bit general. So I would suggest for your specific cases, do consult your new mutual fund distributor or your advisor or your relationship manager who may be able to help you better in specific cases, right? So let's get started. What is a KYC? It's KYC? It's not a unique concept. It's worldwide sub It can two full form. Ho sakte hai. Know your client or know your customer. But effectively what it is trying to do, it is trying to check that if a financial institution is dealing with a person, do they know that person and where does that person live? So in other words, what is the proof of address and what is the proof of identity they are trying to get? to get to the bottom of the details of a particular person. Very standard worldwide, India may there are two regulators which actually govern it, RBI from a banking perspective, SEBI from a securities markets perspective. And uh, while the regulations are laid down by the regulators, the actual authorities who end up performing the KYC and keeping a record and repository of it centrally in India are five. Yes, it's not one. There are five KYC repositories. Their actual names are, the, the actual name of these repositories is called KYC Registration Agents Authority or in short form it is called KRA. Note down this in uh, with you because if your KYCs are getting impacted, the financial in institution with whom you are dealing would say get in touch with KRA. KRA is KYC Registration Authorities. Now in India there are five KRAs, CVL, NDML, DOTEX, CAMPS, and Carvi, five, right? Now your KYC, it's very important for you to know who actually did your KYC because if there is an issue associated with your KYC, you would need to get in touch with the relevant KRA to get it resolved. How do we do that? Let me quickly do a screen share and help you understand how to identify that. To identify a who is your KYC registration authority or the KRA and what's the status of a KYC, you need to visit this website called cvlkra.com. When you visit over there, you have to click on the KYC inquiry button over there. You click over there and it will ask for your PAN. Now let me take an example PAN which I have to be able to show you the situation. Uh, we'll put the PAN number here and then you have to click the capture to, I, to let the system check whether you are not a robot. Over here, please check the object crafted by the human. So yes, I'll click this, this and click verify and click submit. When you'll go over there, scroll down a bit and it will tell, you will see all the five KRA authorities and what records do they have for your KYC. For example, in this case of this particular PAN number, it's saying that the CVL KRA is the repository and the status of the KYC is new KYC validated. Focus on this word KYC validated. We will actually refer to this in the second part of the video where we will talk in detail about the implications of the validated versus others. And what it is saying that the KYC has been the proof of address 
and the proof of id the the, the address proofs and the correspondence proofs have been kind of submitted via aadhar let me show you something else so that you can understand that what other kind other statuses could be i'll pick up another uh, pan number go again over here go through the captcha again <clears throat> and click submit in this case as well the kyc authority is cvl but if you see the word is not validated it is registered difference we'll talk about in later and what it is saying that the proof of address was driving license dl driving license right implications again we will try to see at a later part of the video let me now take another one which is another pan to show you again the implication uh, click on object that where you can not which you cannot fit a backpack obviously i can't fit this in my backpack where and this one as well verify submit here again the cvl is the kyc registration authority but here you are seeing that the address proof is bank passbook right and the kyc status is registered did you notice one thing in case of aadhar it was mentioned as it was kyc validated but in all other cases it's coming up as registered and let me take a last example this one is a nri uh, pan again passing the captcha verify submit what do you see over there the, now in this case the kyc registration authority is actually not C, camps kra the status is also K, C, kyc registered and the type of document is 10 i know what 10 means here i think so it is utility bill so effectively you saw there there are many ways of uh, there could be many kyc authorities and how do you need to kind of look into your particular situation what documents were submitted and what's the current status of your kyc so in summary what we saw just now there were three kyc statuses which we saw kyc validated kyc registered and kyc on hold right we'll move to the next part of the video how do you do a kyc to do a kyc you need broadly four details what are those details you need a pan card which should be operative in nature you need a proof of which is called ovd it's a a word which has been coined in india it's called officially valid document effectively what it means these are the documents which have got both the proof of address and proof of identity in one document itself third you need a email id and fourth a mobile number these are the four critical things required for performing a kyc let's go through them step by step pan card pan card the most crucial document it must be in an operative state that's the most important part you would have seen quite a lot of pan getting in operative because they were not linked with aadhar so it's very important that your pan must be operative we have a very detailed video on how to fix your pan if it is in an inoperative status please refer to that one now before you need to kind of move ahead check whether your pan is operative and then proceed to the next step of the other documents which are called ovd the regulation which governs ovds or your proof of id and proof of address is prevention of money laundering in brackets maintenance of records rules 2005 this particular regulation specifies a few documents which are accepted in a regulation as the proof of identity and address which documents are they passport driving license aadhar uh, then voter id then job card issued by nrega or also called as nregega and letter issued by national population register it has a name and address on it and any other document which the central government may may notify so for most people it will be the four documents passport driving license aadhar and voter id now what's the problem for residents for most of the residents it's, it's a very straightforward thing sabke paas koi na koi document rehta hai but problem kya aati hai residents ko bhi kya problem aa rahi hai the problem over here is that many many kycs in the past before these four documents were notified were made using bank statements utility bills rent agreements you know where we just showed you in a screen share a few examples where some kycs have bank statement on them right so in that situation it is mandatory that over a period of time that these are been done using any of the ovds now 
OVD problem kya again OVD mein kya problem hai in many of these cases these these documents which is told about the four documents they are not having your most updated address proof example passport might be made let's say in, in a city where you were living on rent and now you have moved across or all of the documents may have such situations so the first thing which you really need to do is to get your OVD sorted out the most easiest OVD to sort out is aadhar where you can digitally using your mobile OTPs update your address once that gets done then you can resolve your KYCs as well residents ke liye the situation is relatively very easy we have yet to come across with a situation for resident where we may not have a solution for them the the little bit troublesome area could be for non residents why if you are a non resident just think about it the concept of ovd where the address and id both of them should be in one officially issued document may not always exist example i am aware of indian passport is the only passport which has got address on it overseas passports do not have an address many nris do not have driving licenses and if they do have driving licenses driving licenses of all countries do not have address printed on them voter id concept does not exist in many geographies i am aware of right so an aadhar is an indian concept so then how do they get an ovd so for non residents earlier we could use utility bills and bank statements these are extremely discouraged documents now because the the regulation which i pointed out says that as an alternative if you do not have an ovd your options are one you have to definitely give your passport <clears throat> and your um, let's say if you have a oci card your oci card this will prove your identity for address perspective the overseas address proof is mandatory now what could you give as overseas address proof the earlier concepts of bank statement and utility bills might be very difficult to use in an exceptional perspective if they are used they would need to be attested by the foreign embassies out there indian embassies in your foreign countries you know the challenges to go and get it done and the cost involved with it then what is the outcome the outcome which the regulations are stating is any letter issued by the foreign embassy or the mission or any document issued by the foreign governments out there or foreign jurisdictions if it is in a foreign language it must be translated into english so that it could be accepted in india now the clarity which is missing over here is which document are the regulations referring to aap koi document lekar aa jao and then the regulation at the time of kyc might say not accepted because we do not understand what this is so it could be a challenge my kind of thought process solutions could be one definitely try to get help of an advisor here or a mutual fund distributor or your bank rm why because they can try to get a pre clearance from you from the kra that this is the document which you are going to uh, attach are you happy with it because what you don't want all the way wahan se courier bhejo aur kyc authority say sorry not accepted so it's better that this that pre clearance could come in check your pan is operational third proof of address mein my kind of reasonable assumption could be the most authentic documents could be your tax documents and this is one such document which often comes almost regularly with people so why not you kind of use that as an address proof whether it would be accepted or not get it verified before you uh, submit it for kyc purposes now let's see the outcome of any non compliances if if we have any so we saw the statuses the first one which we saw was kyc validated status if your kyc is validated thumbs up this is the nirvana stage we are trying to reach once it is validated it can be used across any financial institution you do not need to do the kyc again and again and again the only way i am seeing these days where the kyc is getting validated very fast is using aadhar so even i showed you just now in the screen share that even kycs which were using the ovd like driving license was still not validated its status was registered now your question in your mind would be then registered also is okay na it says registered matlab it is there with the authorities no i'll tell you the implication and the difference between validated and registered registered ka matlab bataunga to validated hum appreciate karenge 
Let's say you are investing in a mutual scheme of a mutual, let's say HDFC mutual fund. आपका वहाँ पे फोलियो है. Now you want in an earlier pre first April 2024, if you would have gone to let's say ICIC mutual fund or any other mutual fund. Because your KYC was already in the in the portal, they would have you would not have to give additional documents again and again. But first April onwards, if your KYC status is registered and not validated, then the moment you hop on from one mutual fund to another mutual fund company where you do not have your existing records there, in other words, आपका फोलियो नहीं है. Yeah, let's say you were investing in. stocks through a, a broker and now you want to invest in a mutual fund or you were with a mutual fund now you want to go to any stock broker or whatever if you go to any new financial institution or intermediary and your kyc is registered you will have to give the full kyc documents again and again and again every time when you hop till such time your kyc is validated so kyc registration status is registered May keep you temporarily happy, but may give you problems later on. So my suggestion is get your KYC validated at the earliest. Otherwise, the problem you have just kind of deferred the problem. It is coming your way sooner or later, right? So that was the situation on KYC uh, as registered. KYC if validated, होता तो आप फिर कहीं भी घूम सकते हो from one company to another. No problem with that. Now let's talk about the problem child. KYC on hold. Let me screen share. and give you one example of how that ha could have happened so i'll share my video again and we'll go to the same website of cvl <coughs> put a pan which go through the capture submit what do we see here kyc is on hold what is the reason mobile validation failed the person had given a passport so it was an ovd if you can see but it got failed because of this reason now what to do you have to, unless you get this mobile and email id validated you remember i asked that to get a kyc one of the two main important things are also a mobile and email id in this case this is an old kyc perhaps a mobile validation failed you need to go to get that done There's a web. There each of these. So first, you need to know which KRA you are needing to work with. So over here it says CVL. Then you need to go to CVL's mobile validation and contact validation page. Paste the pan. When you paste the pan, it will tell you what is not validated, and by OTP you can validate it again. So I'll click it here. And oddly, I mean, it, it sounds a little bit odd. While the KYC status over here was saying mobile failed. Here on CVL's website, it is saying mobile is validated, but email ID has not been uh, validated. Otherwise, there would be a tick over here. In any case, we'll have to contact the CVL help desk, giving them this screenshot. Good that this error is here. Another unique error. We are experiencing a unique errors day and day. We'll send them a screenshot saying that hey guys, mobile number is validated. Email we have just done. This is the page what is saying. Can you please lift the on hold status? and after that checking they would do that but in simple terms when you'll do that you have to just click the generate otp otp will go to the respective investors email id and it will get validated let me show you a situation where it is already validated how would it look like so i'll just put another pan here and i'll click outside somewhere here only and say ver validated ver verified verified fine done so this has got no problems over here so coming back here so effectively if your KYC has been put on hold which i think at this point of time is primarily owing to mobile and email failures it could be for other reasons going forward as well like a particular document of KYC could not be uh, valid then you have to follow the KYC process but in this situation uh, it could be digitally resolved the mobile and email id uh, related resolutions so finally what are we trying to achieve as end state over here I think my assessment is that the end state would be that all the KYCs in India have Aadhaar number linked to it, and once Aadhaar is linked, the KYCs would all go into validated status. Maybe we will have different outcomes in the coming few weeks or quarters. We'll keep you updated. But 
If your KYC is not using Aadhaar, I would strongly suggest get it done. There are multiple links which are currently getting generated or the system is trying to, the authorities, the respective KRAs are trying to come up with on digital ways of doing your KYC, modifying your existing KYCs using Aadhaar. As and when we identify those links, we'll put into the descriptions of this video. But we have found out one uh, link which works with CVL related residents. KYC. Unfortunately, for non-residents, there's no digital way of doing KYCs. For residents, there are digital ways. In the, the steps over there are you put your PAN number and then you submit it through the linked Aadhaar and DigiLocker website. It will pull your PAN and Aadhaar. It will open up a camera to take your photo uh, as a live photo. Update a few of your KYC fields like marital status, income levels and so on. Then you have to upload. In some cases, you have to upload some documents like a PAN card or a signature, uh, a scan of your signature, you then submit, it takes your Aadhaar OTP and KYC is modified. It's very, very straightforward where it is working. In some cases, I am pretty sure all the KRAs will gradually come up with this one, uh, digital ways of modifying your KYCs in the coming few weeks or quarters. Till such time, at least the registered KYCs are at least going to get your KYCs working. The problem cases are where your KYCs are on hold. And in this case, as I mentioned, was primarily owing to email and mobile failures. Uh, those, some parts can be done digitally, as I just showed. I'll put the links of every single KRA where you could validate your mobile and email IDs. In case of NRIs, you would notice, let me just put a very critical data point, NRIs, we, the KRAs only validate email IDs. They do not validate mobile numbers because current infrastructure does not, as I understand, their current processes do not require them to validate mobiles because perhaps the SMS gateways are not working as they work in India for them. So they validate the mobile email IDs and mobiles are exempted. So you may be stuck that when you go on this link and you see the links which he just showed you that your email is validated but mobile they i mean you would perhaps find a missing isd code or your isd code might be added to your main number and showing as a proper number and you might be thinking they've captured it wrong so they will not be able to validate even if they captured it right they will not validate it so in that situation if your kyc is coming up status coming up as on hold because mobile is not validated please contact the respective kra it is very critical Example, if your KYC is with CVL and you contact CAMS, CAMS will not be able to help you. you. They will say, go back to CVL. In the description, we are going to give you the help desk email IDs of the respective KRA authorities. You take a screenshot, say I am a NRI, my email ID is validated, mobile is exempted, please lift the, uh, the hold on that. You may be stuck on one thing, which may be a little bit naughty that you are a NRI and your KYC and your investment till date were done as a resident and your mobile number has got changed. In that case, I would suggest do it the right way. Get your KYC updated as a non-resident to the processes I just mentioned. These processes will evolve. We will keep you updated. In the meantime, if you have any questions, do note down in the comments. I promise I'll try my best to respond to them. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.